All right, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about Lydian mode. So first thing, I want to talk about this Lydian chromatic concept. I'm going to tell you right now, I do not have that much knowledge about that very specific book written by George Russell. I wish I did. I've been trying to find this book. The only thing I could find online are used original copies, which range from like $500 to $800. Hopefully in the future, they'll just reprint this thing, sell it at a reasonable price, and then everybody can kind of put their two cents on it. But I'm just going to cover Lydian mode and mostly from a jazz player's perspective and how it's used in jazz. All right, let's get to it. So in music theory, we generally learn everything based off of Ionian mode. And there's an idea that we should actually be starting with Lydian. So it, the idea is that Lydian is the more fundamental mode to start with. So I'm going to explain to you, at least from a very theoretical perspective, why that's so and why it makes a lot of sense to do that. All right. So first, let's talk about what Lydian mode is. Lydian mode, basically, from the Ionian mode perspective, has a sharp four or sharp 11 in jazz but a sharp four i recently did a video on understanding the cycle of fourths and fifths since this is going to be more of a jazz perspective i'm going to focus on the cycle of fourths but the cycle of fourths backwards is the cycle of fifths and the cycle of fifths backwards is the cycle of fourths you may have heard cycle or circle it means the same thing but let's focus on the cycle of fourths the cycle of fourths is really just a way of adding flats. The cycle of fifths is a way of adding sharps. So for this video, I'm really just going to talk about the cycle of flats, which is the cycle of fourths. So if we start with our regular C major Ionian mode, no sharps and no flats, the first flat that we add is a B flat. So now we have mixolydian. From there, we go up a perfect fourth from the B flat and add an E flat instead of an E natural, which gives us Dorian mode. Up a perfect fourth again, we get Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. But here's the thing, we're missing one. And let me show you how this works. And it'll start to make sense why we should start thinking as Lydian as being a little bit more fundamental. Here, we have a C major scale. I've run this through the cycle of flats, ending on a G flat, which gives us Locrian mode. If I go up another fourth from the G flat, I should wind up with a C flat. This is a key change. So now we need to do this in a different key. But if you take a look at what we have, when we respell this in harmonically, if we look at it spelled in harmonically, we have B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then back to B. So once we hit the new key, the key of B, we are already starting with Lydian mode. And then if we go up from the C flat, which is that B natural, then it would take us to F flat. That brings us to Ionian mode. So Ionian would be the second in this cycle of flats. So now we have B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. When you run this thing through all 12 keys, everything starts with Lydian. So purely from a theoretical standpoint, you can see how, wow, that, that really makes a lot of sense in this process of adding flats or the cycle of flats. All right, let's get to what Lydian sounds like. Why does it sound different from Ionian mode? With Lydian mode, what really gives it that really nice sound that we associate it with is that it doesn't want to do anything. Ionian mode feels very much like a resolution and in the scale itself you have a very strong pull from the natural four down to the major third 
when you are improvising, that fourth almost always needs to resolve down to that third in some way. Let me play a couple of licks for you in Ionian mode, and you'll hear the power of that fourth going down to the third. Check this out. <laughs> within its sound, within that scale, functions that drive our ear to a very specific place. Lydian mode is very stagnant. It doesn't have a very strong pull to go anywhere, and it doesn't give us a lot of information of what came before it. So it's a nice place to hang out, basically. <laughs> To your ear, Lydian mode, that sharp four might want to keep going to the fifth. But if we do that, then we aren't really taking advantage of emphasizing the sharp four. That's the note that we really need to bring out to really define the mode. And that's the thing you need to do. When we are talking about modes, it's there are certain notes there that you have to emphasize to really drive your ear to hearing the sound of that mode. Because think about it, Lydian mode is the fourth degree of Ionian mode. So if you're not careful, you can wind up making it sound like a different mode that you didn't really want to have happen in the first place. I talked about this with Phrygian mode and with minor, this happens a lot more than in major because in minor, you have to borrow a major third for the dominant seven chord that precedes it. So for example, if you have uh, E Phrygian minor, I need to borrow a D sharp for the B7, which would be the five chord that precedes it. So in order to really drive your ear toward the sound of a Phrygian minor, I can borrow a D sharp from the B7 scale to really hammer home, hey, we are in E Phrygian mode, not C major or B Locrian or whatever. Okay. Here's the thing that you definitely want to take away from this lesson in understanding Lydian mode. It's very stagnant. One of the best classical examples is the score from E.T., John Williams, using Lydian mode all over the place. But Lydian mode, very stagnant. It's a very slick thing to use, and it's very important to understand how to use it very efficiently. talk about mode shifting, ladies and gentlemen. So let's say we're in the key of C, Ionian, and then we go to a type of C, Lydian. How does this happen? What's What are some common ways something like this happens? So in jazz, you hear a lot of two, five, ones. You also hear a lot of three, six, two, five, ones. And also you hear a lot of four, seven, three, six, two, five, ones. But in this case, the four is actually a sharp four. So you get your sharp four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. This happens a lot in jazz. 
So you'll already have the Ionian in the gear C, your C Ionian uh, tonality setup, your C Ionian mode, and then you'll hear an F sharp half diminished seven, which really is just the C Lydian starting on an F sharp. Sounds like this. Also, something that's very common, you'll see this a lot in Dixieland music, is that you'll, let's say we're in the key of C, you've established your C Ionian mode, and then you'll do that Lydian shift when you get to the 251. But in Dixieland, the two chord is almost always a dominant seven. Technically, a five of five, but for this, I'm just gonna call it a two dominant. So in the key of C, instead of having D minor seven, G7 back to C, you'll have a D7. A D7 is just a C Lydian scale starting on a D. Okay, so to me, it all really jumps out and becomes really obvious when I hear that type of shift from Ionian to Lydian mode. All right, hear this. So what do you play over that sharp four half diminished? What do you play over that D7? Well, you just treat that D7 like it's Mixolydian mode because D7 Mixolydian is the same as your C Lydian and also your F sharp half diminished, same thing. So when you run across these chords, you can understand how they function and you can start really developing an ear for when you hear that Lydian tone, that sharp four really pop out and understanding what to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. See ya.